How's it going everybody? Winter Kills here and welcome to round two of the Frostbite Circuit Opener, the recent online tournament I've held. In a tournament that would be the first of many leading up to an invitational sort of a UDS uh, type tournament. Uh, so all players competing for points on top of bragging rights, etc, etc. Uh, if you guys want to get more information on when the next tournament will be held, feel free to join my Discord link to that down in the description below. would love to have you there and would love to have uh, more tournaments and even more people per tournament. This was a 32 player tournament with a five round of five rounds of Swiss with a top cut top eight. Um, and uh, it was a really great tournament. A lot of diverse decks. We'll be showing you guys the deck breakdown between games one and two. Uh, but we have Mermail versus uh, Infinitrack Trains. I figured, um, you know, with having, I think, two Mermail players in the running, uh, I figured I had to at least get one of them in a feature match for you guys. And lo and behold, it's playing against Infinitrack Trains, a deck that I also really, really enjoy playing. So, as you can see here, Mermails, I believe, winning the die roll and wanting to go first. The deck can play a very strong going first game, as we all know. Um, and it can also play a pretty decent going second, though. All, all things considered right now, I think uh, probably the safer bet to, to go with Mermails is probably to go first. Because uh, obviously Minstrel is pretty helpful in some cases. Um, and so, of course, is Moulin Glacia. And there's so many different ways you can play the deck. So many different styles. You can play build a board you could go the omega hand loop version um, and do so all sorts of synchro shenanigans on the opponent's turn and play it that way uh, obviously each build lends its own inconsistencies and its own um, you know differences within the main deck and extra deck um, so the minstrel will pitch itself alongside dragoons and it looks like that's going to hit spin turn out of his hand uh, which is a pretty good snipe all things considered well i guess it's not that great um the one thing with Minstrel, though, is that uh, you, the hand knowledge is pretty good. Uh, I cannot deny that. But uh, sometimes it can be bittersweet when resolving this card, uh, especially if you're looking at their hand and you either see multiple hand traps or you see just something like Dark Ruler No More. Um, and then at that point, you kind of got to leave that card in their hand and hope you can hit it with Moon Glacier later, which obviously you have a better chance at doing. But again, in this case, it seems like just banishing... Uh, the spin turn really isn't too big of a factor, really just at this particular point in the game going forward to see what his opponent is playing. So he knows that he's playing trains, uh, he knows that it's uh, an, a deck that probably wants to OTK, um, a deck that you know most people know as a deck that OTKs, obviously Juggernaut, Lieb, and Gustav Max, etc, etc. Uh, so it looks like we're going to be resolving a copy of Megalo, looks like we discarded Prince and Dragoons, Prince bringing back Dragoons, and Dragoons adding a copy of Heavy Infantry. Heavy Infantry can be great for a couple of reasons. Uh, Bissalacia fodder, uh, Synchro fodder with something like Tatsunoko, um, you name it, uh, can be a pretty helpful card nonetheless. So, now going for Anemone, uh, and that is going to revive Deep Sea Minstrel, interestingly enough, but it is a tuner, of course, uh, and of course can help go into Needle Fiber, which conveniently enough is a water monster. And uh, once that Minstrel is reborn, we do have a Moulin Glacia hitting the board in defense position. So now, uh, knowing what other cards in his hand really has a better idea of what cards he's looking to hit probably at this point. Um, hits a Bullet Express Train, which is actually not the best card to hit, especially if he were to knock another machine out of his hand. So will just get it right back in the end phase. But it looks like it's going to be a copy of Outrigger Extension, um, which is pretty interesting. This uh, I believe that Continuous Spell allows uh, you to be able to uh, overlay sort of Ixies change one of your Infinitrack monsters, I believe, or Earth uh, Machine or Machine Ixies monsters. Um, so we're going to see uh, the Needle Fiber with what looked to be the Minstrel and the Anemone to go for uh, Fiber. And then, of course, Fiber bringing out Launcher to Synchro with uh, the Dragite, um, or Synchro for the Dragite, rather. And I really do like this play quite a bit, at least the way I play it out in my particular build. Um, it would have ended probably a bit differently. Um, the only thing that I would, and I think, uh, the, actually the main difference will come down to, uh, what he does with his needle fiber, m primarily with mine as I try to either have something like Totally Awesome on alongside of this board, if, if it's possible, right? Toad isn't always possible with every hand. Setting up a rank 4 play as easy as it may seem, um, it cannot always be done. But, uh, usually what I like to do with my needle fiber is to, after the drag I is resolved, uh, summon out Formula Synchron off of the Fiber Draw card and then go into Satellite Warrior for two interruptions. Really just uh, player preference at this point. So 
we're going to see Heavy Forward get activated, and that's going to be negated. I know the player shows it's still in draw phase, but probably just forgetting to advance into the main phase, so just uh, ignore that for the time being. But the Heavy Forward will be negated, which is pretty good for those that don't know. It is a basically a tanky for Infinitrack monsters. And, uh, yeah, so this is what I was expecting here. On the resolution of Dragite, we're going to see uh, not only Needle Fiber, we're also going to see uh, the Abyss Sphere, which, again, is a pretty popular option in some Mermail builds to help continue to Synchro Climb on the opponent's turn. And primarily here, what you're seeing is the fact that he's brought out Abyss and Array, which is a semi-decent card on its own. I'm not really too big of a fan of it because um, I, I think it just leads... Uh, to more brick hands than it does better hands. Uh, and also the fact that it, it's basically a Garnet in this situation, I would believe, because it, you're, it's probably one of the only level 3s that you're going to have after a normal combo if you're only playing one gun specifically. Uh, so this card really only serving one purpose, at least its main purpose, to be summoned out of the deck off of Sphere. Uh, so it can be synchroed with that uh, that uh, copy of or Desert Locust, which does have that quick synchro effect, much like Formula does. So he'll get to take an additional card out of his hand while his opponent will choose the card he has to discard. And of course, he gets to choose which card goes, which um, isn't so bad, but you're still forcing a card out of your hand regardless. So a card you'd probably rather hold on to. Um, so that will be forcefully discarded to the grave. And you can see here we're going to be synchroing the... Uh, the 6 into 3 into the Crocosaur. And this is only going to turn itself into another disruption. That not only will be able to get to draw a card, um, but he'll be able to uh, discard 2 to destroy a card. And we know he has infantry in hand still. So essentially that's going to turn into a pop 2, which is still pretty nice. Um, yeah, you, you really like to see these uh, nice little synchro combos uh, going through here. Unfortunately, it is leading to a bit of a, a, a nasty hand loop, but... Um, it is what it is. So the uh, second copy of Heavy Forward being activated, um, and I'm, I'm not sure if it has like the similar uh, type effect where if it's like Shadal Fusion, if the activation is negated, it can be activated again, or it might just not be a hard once per turn. But uh, he'll search the Brutal Dozer, and he'll have Machina Metal Cruncher here, uh, which is a really strong card to have in this particular situation. For those that don't know what it does, it can basically, I believe, just either be Normal Summon without Tribute or Special Summon your field while you control no monsters. And you basically reveal three, I believe, any three machines from your deck. Um, and your opponent picks one of them at random to add to your hand. So you're really hoping uh, to get uh, the card you really, really want, obviously. But uh, it gives you a chance to try to see some more resources. This is a card I was considering possibly playing in a train build of mine. As you see, he reveals a Gearbox, a Dara Crane, and uh, what looked to be the Bolt Express. And I believe that he did get the Gearbox... I believe once the gearbox is added, it can do something. I'm not entirely sure. Um, not too familiar with the ancient gear engine. I know some people like to play it in their train decks. I'm personally not too big of a fan of it. Metal Cruncher, I'm not too big of a fan either. Um, I might experiment with it, though, just because it seems like it's just another starter, essentially, at the end of the day, which obviously doesn't hurt to have comparing, you know, trains. is a deck that can be a little less consistent, so... Maybe having a little bit of consistency boost there is nice, but I can see a dead drawing later on. That's a possibility. And I also really wish it was uh, a level 10, but as you can see, it's serving its purpose pretty well here. Uh, getting an additional resource to the hand, and also providing tribute fodder for that um, that Brutal Dozer, which is bringing out uh, that uh, Harvester, or not Harvester, the, uh, the uh, Trencher, rather, been a little while since i've played train so bear with me and he's also getting derrick rain out on top of that uh so now we're gonna see crocosaurus here and um it's up to the tra uh, the mermail player here to make the right decision um because if he if he clears essentially uh the trencher he can just revive the dozer back which doesn't lead to too much but it at least allows for a play to happen so it looks like brutal dozer is being targeted here and uh, unfortunately, there is no other level modifiers on the board right now that could help pair with the Dara Crane. Um, because as is, you know, a, a, a potentially a devastating battle phase could be on the horizon. But it looks like he's actually going to clear the Trencher. Uh, and Trencher, uh, at this point, you can only imagine it's going to be able to bring back the Brutal Dozer. Fortune won't get its effect again. Um, but uh, we'll be able to help go for a Link 2. Could possibly go for something like Double-Headed Anger Knuckle, Cliff Ward Genius... Uh, etc, etc, you name it. There are some options in the wheelhouse currently 
not too many obviously very limited i would say our train players on a, a pretty short clock at the moment um especially with a moulin glacier uh, uh you know and a dragite uh, just quite literally vibing there on the field um the uh, crocosaur not too big of a threat as it's only got about 1500 attack and 1500 defense um but really as far as our train player is concerned that's a lot because the ancient gear ballista not going to be able to do too much to get around it but it'll be able to activate its effect to search out gearbox and believe if gearbox is added it can add another earth machine um and again this is uh, the interesting part about the ancient gear engine uh, is that it can search out i believe additional cards and does have some synergy with the ancient gear link but i'm just personally not too big of a fan of it because i just don't want to have to play a garnet within the main deck if at all possible as you can see you can go ahead and search the uh, anchor drill there but uh, I believe with the normal summon already being exhausted, I don't think there's much he can do at this point other than go uh, into the battle phase here and, and run over the, um, you know, the, the launcher. Um, and I believe he's also going to actually use the other effect of Ballista, which is to send off a card on his field to drop a monster, I believe, to zero attack and defense. Um, so he could actually run over Dragite here. Which is pretty nice because that'll get a, a spell negation, spell trap negation off the field for next turn. So if he does survive and he does see something like urgent schedule or see something like heavy forward, uh, he's going to be able to actually use it and not worry so much about there being an interruption on the field to stop it. Um, so we'll head into the main phase two and we'll head into the end phase here. And I believe he should have, actually, no, I don't think he will get a bullet train effect because that was the Dara crane that hit the graveyard. So was a little anxious there that he might have a, a little bit of free resource to go grab but unfortunately not this time around and uh now in the hands of the mermail player um has moulin has a 2000 attack 2000 defense crocosaur now and just a measly little uh fishborg launcher which um not doing too much. You're definitely not in the the round the the realms of OTK, but there of course is Deep Sea Aria, and that is going to go be able to get uh, Deep Sea Diva. And uh, unless he's got an Ash Blossom in hand, which I don't believe he does, I believe we know what uh, both the cards in the uh, train player's hands is that Gearbox and that Anchor Drill. So there's Deep Sea Diva, and Deep Sea Diva is probably going to get Prince and Prince, etc., etc., Sun Dragoons, Dragoons, Megalo. And just continue to pop up, and I can really only imagine that we'll just see game on board here momentarily after a few things resolve. Just waiting on until the bitter end. And actually, we're not even going to see Prince activate its effect because I believe he just entirely doesn't need to. As Boral Sword hits the field, and Moulin Glacia turns to attack position. Yeah, this is going to end up being game right here. Hands down, I believe they're saying GG in the chat. So Sarome will take game one and we're gonna head into game two but first we're gonna take a look at the detailed deck breakdown uh for those that haven't seen game one or round one i highly recommend you guys check it out uh but there's a look at the playing field pretty diverse two mermail players and of course the one infinitrack plane train player crusadia otk pure mac knight being the most represented deck alongside uh dinos and an invoked variant um and a one infernoble deck as you can see as this tournament is post uh rise of the duelist i guess uh, you know, allowing cards that have been confirmed in Rise of the Duelist. Um, so yeah, pretty diverse playing field. Uh, but now we're going to head into game two. And I believe Trains opting to go second here, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, makes sense for the most part because it is an OTK deck and you're just kind of hoping to blow through uh, whatever defenses the opponent might have and, you know, burn for 2K, swing for six, and really that just be it. And obviously with heavy sideboard power, Clearing that said field could be pretty easy. Um, but Mermail is one of those decks that has a pretty solid grasp in the game one, uh, or at least the going first game, uh, you know, with, you know, such good hand manipulation from Minstrel and uh, Moulin Glacia. So I personally, if I was playing trains, would have opted to go first here because all it takes, you know, is uh, just a, a, a Neptibus to basically get access to, uh, you know, the forceful century, uh, whatever you want to, you know, call it. So... Um, we're gonna discard Minstrel and Dragoons, and, um, the one, I guess the one reason why I don't really like the Minstrel play too much is right here, I'm so, it's so engraved in my head just to go Send Dragoons, Add Dragoons, Megalo, but if you go Send Dragoons, Add Dragoons, Minstrel, 
Um, it still winds up, I guess, being the same thing. Uh, that's, I guess, why in my current build of Murma, I'm only opting to play just one Minstrel. Because um, it's really only good and helps to, you know, play out better fields when you're discarding the Druids. With obviously being the most optimal thing. So, um, and it, with easy, as such easy access as we have to Prince now, Deep Sea Aria and all that stuff. Um, really all it takes is to resolve a prince to get your full, you know, Minstrel Dragoons combo going. So, that's why I think going forward, I think I might just be playing one. And I think I just want to test one. Because I've tested three in the past and it's just felt a little overkill for me here. Um, but as you can see, Deep Sea Aria now helping to continue as he hits a Trencher out of the hand. Really doesn't make a difference here what card he hit, I would imagine. Uh, I'm sure he would have seen like an Ash or something or a Ghost Ogre. Um... Or Valor or an Imperm or whatever it may be if it was something of value, but uh, or uh, I mean hitting any side deck cards out of this hand something like evenly or lightning storm is Less than optimal because of course you will get them back and like the cards uh, that are sent off Mulan So we're gonna see the Megalo activate here, and he's actually not going For the abyss sphere which for the most part makes sense because Mizuchi can stop super poly can also stop lightning storm and dark lure no more so uh, could possibly be even siding the uh, Mizuchi. I'm not uh, too familiar with Sarome's build, but uh, could definitely be a possibility um, because, you know, you could keep that sphere in game one for, you know, the full-on uh, hand control play uh, and hopefully all that stuff goes through. And then in game two, if you're, you know, you're made to go first again and you're fearing that, you're feeling all the sideboard cards, you know, you can go for uh, the Mizuchi search and then you're pretty much prepped to stop whatever side deck card they might have that you weren't able to get with Minstrel. So... Uh, but this Mulan Glacia feels especially bad here. I feel really, I felt really bad for our train player here um, when I saw the heavy forward go. But not only just the heavy forward, the revolving switchyard. Oh man, those are such good cards to hit. And uh, as you might have imagined, the Anemone is going to bring out Minstrel, and he's actually linking not for um, not for the uh, Alacia here. No, 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 we can't go for Alacia. We're gonna go for the Needle Fiber, of course. That, of course, is going to summon, I would imagine, either D.Va or, yep, the, uh, the Fishborg Launcher to pair with a um, possible Megalo play, if he has it. Or we might see, okay, we're seeing another Link 2 here, or we're seeing a Synchro, rather, going for the Crocosaur this time around. So a bit of a different end field. Having to Link off the Moon Glacier does feel a little bit bad because you will lose the next battle phase, just something you don't want to do. Um, against the deck like trains because that gives them essentially another turn which is exactly what he needs currently Now we'll see fishborg launcher be brought back uh, Via its own effect and then we're gonna see uh, another link so this time around going for a lacy and equipping with Mizuchi uh, So that is it for the turn actually not opting to keep the Crocosaur keeping the Alacy instead, which I guess makes sense because it'll get you a, a card in the process instead of um, You know trying to be greedy and go for the double pop and there of course is a lightning storm So as I mentioned earlier, you can see why is Mizuchi is a pretty good card in a sense of stopping those um, Big powerful floodgate spell cards like dark or no more like lightning storm as we just seen here We're gonna see needle fiber tag out now and uh, we might see desert locusts the classic draw phase lightning storm. Um, but we might see Desert Locust come out here. Which I think may be the only target in the extra deck for uh, Needle Fiber. At least in this particular build. And um, I, I can't really read the chat right now as I'm commentating this because I have to commentate. Well, I have to... Anytime I have to do commentary, I have to watch the video back in like one fourth quality because my computer sucks. Um, or at least it's gotten worse over the years. Um, or else I'm watching like at two frames per second. So just a little bit of a, a side note there. But they may be sorting out uh, some sort of game state stuff. So uh, needle fiber coming out and then uh, bringing out with it the, uh, the desert locust, as you might have imagined. Um, and then just going to make the opponent lose out and a little bit more card advantage. Um, but I guess for the most part, yeah, like I was gonna say, you're, you're gonna want to discard Trencher because it has a graveyard effect anyways, and there is an urgent schedule, which feels really good right now, but oh man, unfortunately, Miss Blossom says otherwise, uh, and that's a little bit of knife, a little bit of a knife in the side right there. It started off so strong, 
that uh, that urgent schedule could have really turned things around um, if it were not for that Ash Blossom. Like, I, I, we would probably be going um, to different places. We'd probably be turning things around. Going to a game three, obviously, if I can tell how much time is left in the video here. Um, so, setting one and passing, discarding the Naray in the end phase, of course, change out with the Teus, essentially. Uh, which, again, is the more economical reason to sort of keep the Alacia over uh, the Crocosaur, because, of course, he already had Ash and Anso. Probably didn't want to have to discard that to make it work, and also uh, didn't want to lose out on the card advantage. So there's Teus discarding the Neptibus, um, which is fine, because uh, you could probably, if he's playing more than one Anemone, he can easily get access to it again. Um, but uh, looks like he's just going for Mander, and we'll see him revive uh, Dragoons, and then, yep, we're going to see the normal summon of Mander. Um, interesting that there was no Pike. Could have possibly gone for Pike. I'm a huge fan of Pike. Uh, in the main deck, but either way, the same thing being accomplished here. Another level 4 water to help go into Bahamut Shark, and that, of course, alongside is going to bring out Totally Awesome. Really just trying to secure a game at this point. We'll see a Dragoon's effect. But what will he add, though? Looks like it's an infantry, and of course, with Alacia still on board, infantry is going to be a nice pair. Uh, but now, what to do with the rest of the cards in the field, because they're still not game just yet. Uh, but it looks like a, a Link 3, so BLS Link hitting the field. And then ending his turn is, of course, uh, the Moulin Glacier from last turn. I think I might have forgot myself, but luckily these guys didn't forget. Um, so just setting up a board that says, I've got you down already. I'm going to try to keep you down at least one more turn. Um, and uh, try to snuff it out next turn. Um, and there's Pegasus Railroad Stampede, which is a, a fantastic top deck right now. But unfortunately, Totally Awesome is there to say no to that uh, and also add back a card in the process. Uh, could even go for Dragoons at this point. Uh, strictly because, uh, you know, you've still got that uh, Alacia discard and you really don't need to use infantry at this point off of Alacia because you've already got things secure. But also, it looks like you could just go for Marksman just to outright clear that set card anyways. And of course, the BLS link. Since it was used with Teus, cannot be destroyed by battle, uh, or cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects, which is just huge. And then we'll see him discard the Marksman and t tag out now for that Abyss Pike. And uh, that set card now going. We'll find out what it is here momentarily. And, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, the game is uh, not most likely, definitely 100% in favor of the... Uh, Mermel player, and it is just a defense position. Ash, blo ash Blossom, um, as it usually is. It's usually the set, the ash, and hope for the best. And there's the normal summon of the infantry going for the extra normal summon with Deep Sea Diva for Prince, um, and just trying to seal game out at this point. I imagine we might see Boral Sword here with everything. Uh, yeah, we're going to see Boral Sword, and that's just going to be game outright. Uh, 3K, 3K, and 3K. And even 800 as well. So, Sarome will be taking the match 2-1 over Infinitrack Trains. I'd like to see both of these decks win. But, unfortunately, uh, you know, only one can win, obviously. But I believe we got two other feature matches to show you guys in round two. So, stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, Winner Kill Sign and We'll see you guys in the next one. And, of course, I want to give a special shout-out to my Divine Level channel members here on YouTube. Keeping the channel going strong. Uh, thank you guys so much. Of course, Academic Thick, Travis Harrison, Zors. Thank you guys again for continuing to generously support the channel as you have.